Hi everyone, it's Cake Talk. Uh, it's Thursday, November 19th. Today's my best friend's birthday. Yay, happy birthday, Bianca. Um, okay, so let's get started. There's a ton of questions. Oh, I have to activate the questions on the screen. Okay, I think I'm getting good at this. Okay, so this is a question from, oh, I hope it's Yumana underscore Abuzid. I hope that's right. Who washes up your cake pans? Me and these two friends. I wash my cake pans. Um, I actually am a neat freak, so I always feel like washing. I get in trouble when we're shooting because I always want to wash them in between. I can't stand to see dirty dishes in my sink, but I do them all by myself. Next, this is from Carly Howard. How long, on Instagram, how long does it take, usually take for you to film an episode of How to Cake It? It takes about 14 hours just to film the episode. That doesn't include any editing that happens, obviously, because you're watching a video that's about 15 minutes long. 14 hours, so I like to say you guys get to see one minute per hour. <laughs> and that is me pretty much rushing because in real life, if I had a cake order, um, I would probably make the cake over two or three days. Um, and that doesn't happen on how to cake it. That's why you always see the cakes are already baked. The buttercream is made, the ganache is made, everything I need is sort of there. And then it's just the decorating. Okay, next. Ba, ba, ba. Here's a good question from Believe X03. What is the right temperature for piping icing? Um, that depends on the type of icing you're using. I usually pipe with Italian meringue buttercream. Royal icing is a little more forgiving. Um, but I don't know the exact temperature, but it definitely shouldn't be too hot because even when you're piping, the heat of your hand is touching that bag and heating your icing. So you don't want the room to be hot as well as your hands to be hot uh, and the cake to be hot. That's a bad equation. So you want it to be sort of really nice and cool. Not too cold either that your icing starts to become too stiff in the bag and it's harder to press out, but just sort of room temperature and on the cool dry side. Um, okay, this is from, oh, okay, H-A-R-U-H-I dot Bay. Love that. Uh, Yolanda, why do you love baking so much and when did you start baking? I started baking uh, when I was a kid, maybe around like 10. Um, my dad used to bake a lot and I would watch and bake with him. I love baking because for two reasons. Um, I tend to be a ritualistic person and I like sort of rules to follow and baking definitely has those. But at the same time, it's very creative, especially cake decorating. I love being creative. I love sort of having a set stack of like recipes in my roster and then using them in different ways to make different things. Uh, but cake decorating definitely does have rules, a lot more than just baking does as well. A lot of people ask um, often on my novelty cake videos why the cake is always chocolate or vanilla and this reason is because I have formulated those recipes to be amazing to carve and to be sturdy and that is important when you're making a novelty cake you can't make a strawberry shortcake with sponge cake and whipped cream and then carve that into a turkey it will fall apart and so you're never going to see me do that which is why I love making the other videos the how to's um, where I get to play with flavor a little bit more and the filling and the colors and all that kind of stuff. But when you're making a novelty cake, it's very important to follow the rules because your cake will fall apart. Or sometimes you see cakes and you see the icing sort of pushing out the side because the cake is too light or the filling is too light and the weight of the fondant alone is sort of pushing down and pressing the filling out of the cake. And you don't want to see that. So next question, this is from, oh my God, oh boy, this, oh, I think it says this Landsmere, I'm going to guess that's Scandinavian. Are there more people behind the camera other than Jocelyn and Chet? It's Chet, 
So behind the camera, there's Jocelyn and Chet. Jocelyn is my producer, um, and she adds the background laughter. Chet is the man behind the camera. Uh, but there are other people on my team. There is Orhan, who I made my W, uh, not my WCW, my MCM this week. He is the editor of How to Cake It. There is Connie, who is Jocelyn's partner. They're both my producers, and the, the two wonderful women who approached me uh, when they wanted to make How to Cake It. And so we, the three of us, are partners in this. And then there's Annie as well, and Annie helps me with things like this cake talk because I'm not the most uh, technical technologically advanced person. Um, she also helps um, when I write my blogs that go with all the videos. She's the person who pulls out the perfect picture to go with like what I'm writing. So she helps me with that kind of stuff that I'm not very good at. I didn't uh, write a blog before this. So there's a lot that came with How to Cake It that was in my life before. Uh, I'm just a cake decorator. I'm self-taught and for years I was standing in my kitchen making cakes. Okay. So next, this is from Sophia underscore K underscore one, two, three. Will you be doing a meet and greet? I hope to be doing a meet and greet, very much so. Um, I don't know when, I don't know where, but it is, uh, we definitely want to do that. It's, you know, something that's in the works and we're always thinking about it. It's really hard to be honest to keep up with filming one video per week takes so much work and so much energy uh, and so much balance. So we're, we're sort of just focused on that, getting you guys a video every single week because we know that that's important. Next, this is from Jojo underscore 1923. Can you make something Harry Potter related? This is like the number one question. <laughs> this is top three for sure. Um, I definitely want to do something Harry Potter because so many of you, like 90% of you have asked me for it. Uh, the only catch is there's sort of a lot of laws uh, that people are unaware of around what you can and can't do. So what would make us very upset is to do something like a Harry Potter cake uh, or a Hunger Games cake or some sort of, you know, big famous anything like Disney, Star Wars, anything like that. And then for those companies to feel unhappy with our video for any reason at all, they have the right to have us take it down. So for us to put all that effort in and all that work in and make an amazing Harry Potter cake and then the Harry Potter Corporation's like, no, we don't like it, take it down. That would really break our hearts, really, on this side of the fence. and we would be really upset if you guys didn't even get the chance to see it. So on the back end, we always try to um, like get permission to do those things before we attempt it. And that's why they take longer. I am very sorry, but Harry Potter is on that list. Okay, next. Um, here we go. Oh, hi, Vidya. Every week. How are you? Hi, Landa. Do different cake pans filled with different amount of cake batter require different temperature and time in the oven? They don't require different temperature, but they do require different time. Obviously, the more batter that's in a pan, the longer it takes to bake, whether that's because the pan is small and the cake is high, like there's a lot of batter in the pan, or the cake is really big, like a 12 inch, 14 inch, 16 inch cake take a very long time to bake. Um, you know, baking time is something, I know a lot of recipes are like, bake it for this long. And that often works with things that bake for a short time, like cookies, but with cake, you really have to pay attention. You have to rotate your cakes if your ovens have a hot spot. If you don't have a convection oven and the heat only rises from the bottom, this is super important to rotate um, your cake pans. It's also important to always check your cake. So use a cake tester or a toothpick, put it in the center of your cake, and when you pull it out and there's nothing on the toothpick or there's only a few loose crumbs, then your cake is done. You don't want to see any wet batter. So I can't tell you the amount of times I've tried recipes and baked it to the exact time they say and I either have to bake it longer or for less time. You have to pay attention to baking. I think people, you know, they just sort of want the answer. And they're like, well, I made this and I put it in the oven for half hour and it didn't work because everybody doesn't have the same oven. Everybody doesn't live at the same altitude. There's a lot of factors at play. 
And different batters bake differently depending on how you know moist they are. Like I could bake the same size banana cake and the same size chocolate cake, and the chocolate cake will probably bake faster than the banana cake because of the amount of moisture in it. Um, so it's very important to always pay attention and test your cakes when baking. And that's how you get to know your oven because then you know, okay, this recipe says half an hour, but my oven usually takes a little bit longer. Okay, next, Vidya, again, I'm gonna answer this because so many people, uh, um, oh, it's not, I read the wrong name. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, this is from Kelt Cooks 2 Will you be making a Christmas cake this year and will you be showing us how to make one? Hi from Wales. <gasps> Hello, um, yes, I am making three different Christmas cakes. So pretty much all of December uh, is going to be dedicated to Christmas. So I hope you're looking forward to it because I think they're really fun. And I think I picked things that, you know, you guys can actually attempt if you want to. So I'm very excited. I can't even believe it's Christmas. So for me, it's felt like Christmas in November because we have been filming Christmas. And I'm actually going to film a Christmas video after this, after I leave you guys. Okay, next. Oh, this is from H4, wow, Happy Luna, but instead of an A, there's a four. Love your vids and you, and Jocelyn is adorable. Yes, she sure is. Fan from Singapore, I've always wanted to go to Singapore. I hope I can come there. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, next. <laughs> This is from Zoe Nickel. How can I be as funny as you? Well, thank you. I'm glad you think I'm funny. Um, you know, the funny wasn't really part of the plan for uh, how to kick it, but I am somebody who loves to laugh. I like to try and be lighthearted because uh, life can be really tough. And so if you've watched from the beginning and you've watched some of my earliest vids, like the color wheel cake and the St. Patty's Day cake, You'll see that I'm not quite as jokey uh, in those videos. Um, and then we started to include some of the bloopers and outtakes and things that I just said, you know, <laughs> between shots and add them to the videos. And it seems like for the most part, most of you have really liked it. I do get comments from people who say, you know, shut up and just make cakes and all kinds of other lovely things. But the truth is, um, the one thing I've learned in life is be yourself. Every, you can't please everyone. Everyone isn't going to like you, and it shouldn't be your aim to go out in the world and make everybody like you. What's most important is that you like yourself. So I'm just acting like silly old me, and you hear Jocelyn laughing, and you hear us bantering, and uh, I'm having a great time. And on top of that, I get to do what I love the most. So I'm glad you think I'm funny. Thank you. I take that as a compliment. But my advice is just be yourself. Whatever kind of funny you are, be that. Um, okay, Hadley, okay, this is from Hadley Clark with three Ks. How do you make such detailed cakes? Well, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I like to pay a lot of attention to detail. Uh, I'm actually really hard on myself. If you could see uh, before we start to shoot, I'm really nervous, I'm wringing my hands, I procrastinate. Turkey was a really hard one for me. Um, I really think we should have included in the video how many times I asked Chet, does this look like a turkey? Because I asked a lot. Um, but I'm just somebody who's very focused and when I put my mind to doing something, I want to do it and I want to do it perfectly. And even after I'm done, to tell you the truth, there's so many times that I think to myself, oh, I should have done that, or I should have done that, or next time I make a turkey, I'm going to do this. So um, I, I kind of have this attitude that I don't want to stop learning, even though I'm technically teaching myself, if that makes sense. Uh, with cake decorating and with a lot of things, the best way to learn is to do it. That's the best way to learn because then you learn your strengths, you learn how to work with fun, you learn how to work with cake, you learn what temperature does, you learn all these things by doing it. Um, and so the more I do it, um, the better I get and the more focused I get and the more I want to learn. So yeah, you just have to have a passion for it and, and you know, wanting to do it right is half the battle. So next, um, okay, here we go. This is from... Shreya 
Gambhir, I hope I said your name right. Is there any full-fledged degree course for becoming a pastry chef besides regular diplomas? Well, first off, I am not a pastry chef. Um, I did go to school to be a regular chef, like a, a cook, I went to cooking school, um, but I'm actually a self-taught cake decorator. I worked in bakeries where we just iced cakes and piped and wrote happy birthday, and I loved doing that for a while, but then it didn't feel challenging, so I started to teach myself how to work with fondant. And keep in mind, this is years ago. I started making cakes in the year 2000. Probably a lot of you are born in that year. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and. And so I've just been practicing and teaching myself and learning for a long time now. And so I don't have a degree in cake decorating because I do believe in school, please don't get me wrong, but maybe where you live in the world, it's not readily available to you. Maybe it's really expensive. So this is the kind of thing that you can teach yourself, especially with things like YouTube now. Um, there's just endless amounts of cake decorators with different styles and different knowledge that you can learn from um, and start to practice on your own and see if you even like it in the first place. You know, when I went to cooking school, I went to school with a lot of people who no longer even do that because it's very different to do something in school and then to get into the real world and do it, especially when it comes to something like this, something hands-on. Um, yeah, so I, I think it depends on where you live in the world. Of course, there are amazing schools like the Cordon Bleu, um, where you can become a pastry chef and get an amazing education. Uh, but don't feel like that's your only choice. It would be lovely to do. I would love to go to the Cordon Bleu. I would love to. That would be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I hope I answered your question. Um, next. Um... Okay, here's a question. Oh, it's from Kelt Cooks 2 again. Hello. Um, hi, Landa. I tried to make your time meringue frosting the other day, but when I added the butter, it curdled. Do you have any tips? Oops, I lost your question. Um, okay, so basically, um, make sure that your bowl is completely room temperature. When you put your hand on your mixing bowl, you shouldn't feel heat at all and then add the butter. And you don't add the butter in one big lump, you add little bits at a time and let it work its way in. And then you continue to run the mixer, continue to run it, and what happens is as that butter incorporates, you'll see the buttercream, buttercream thicken. So please don't stop as soon as you start adding the butter and you think, oh, it doesn't look like buttercream. It needs a moment to come together in the mixer, like this, and then it comes together. But the temperature is really important. The sugar has to have been 240 degrees and then the bowl has to be not hot at all. Because if the bowl is too hot and your meringue is still hot and you start adding butter, that butter is just melting into the meringue rather than mixing in and becoming a part of it and thickening it. So pay attention to the temperature. Uh, next question. Um, okay. Hi, from Northern Ireland. Ireland, yay! How do you decide between your chocolate cake recipe on the blog and the other one with the buttermilk, oil, coffee, egg, flower pot video? Oh, oh, that might be a mistake because I did use my chocolate cake in the flower pot video. Also, how much chocolate, chocolate can I add to your buttercream before it upsets the consistency? One quarter of the amount of buttercream. Okay, so um, my chocolate cake recipe, Yo-Yo's Ultimate Chocolate Cake, is what I always choose when I make a shaped cake. Uh, just because it's sturdier, great flavor, but really easy to carve. The other recipe that you can find, I think I use it in my Sunday cupcakes. That's actually a Sweet Apolita recipe. I love the Sweet Apolita blog. Um, and I just find it easy, delicious, most importantly, and it's great because you don't need a stand mixer. Uh, it works well with a hand mixer, and I've even made it by hand, and it was delicious. So, um, but I always choose Yo-Yo's chocolate cake when I am carving a cake, just for more strength. Um, and with reference to the chocolate in the buttercream, I'm a big eyeballer, but um, I think in, what do I do in the cake topper video? I think I added four or five ounces 
of good quality dark chocolate, like 72% um, to two cups of buttercream. But really you should always eyeball number one, melt your chocolate, you want it melted, but you don't want it hot because that will start to melt your buttercream. So melt your chocolate, cool it, but keep it melted, and then slowly pour it into the buttercream. I like to use a whisk um, when I'm mixing chocolate into the buttercream. So I would pour like half in, mix it, and then half in again. If I felt like it was too runny before I added the other half, I wouldn't do it. The other um, tip I would give you is if you're adding chocolate to your buttercream, do it in advance because chocolate, um, you know, it turns back solid. It, it actually offers some great consistency to the buttercream. It's just when you do use when you do it immediately, when you mix the chocolate in and then you want to use the buttercream immediately, the buttercream seems softer and it is at that moment. But if you would actually let that buttercream stand for a bit, the consistency would come back. Uh, but flavor is a big part of adding chocolate to buttercream. Uh, I actually have another chocolate buttercream recipe which I really want to do on the channel. It's a Swiss meringue because a lot of you asked me for a Swiss meringue and it has a lot more chocolate in it. Um, so I, that I will be doing definitely in the new year sometime, so look out for that. Okay. <laughs> okay, what's next? Um, okay, here's a good question. This is from Milo, Jim, and me. Aww. How do you feel about cake plagiarism? After your brand cake episode, I started to see so many copies around Instagram from professional bakers. My son and I love to watch your videos. He even bakes regularly with his Play-Doh. He's four. Oh, that's adorable. Um, well, I'm not the first person in the world to make a brain cake, certainly. And I guess, I mean, you can't really, you know, plagiarize something that is human anatomy because I technically just made a cake out of something that is real or to look like something that is real. Um, so I don't feel like that's plagiarism. I definitely wasn't the first. Uh, mine just happened to get a lot of sort of airplay and got a lot of coverage, I think, because it coincided with the Walking Dead premiere. Um, but there is such a thing as cake plagiarism, and that's something I felt more, you know, when I was making cakes for clients, I would have clients, I would meet with clients, I would make a drawing or sketch for them, and then they would take my sketch and go to five other cake decorators and sort of shop around. And that's really hard to take, and I'm sure that has happened to a lot of you who are professional cake decorators. It's really, really difficult, uh, but there isn't really much you can do. Yes, it has happened to me. Uh, it, it made me sad because I think there's something about cake decorating that people don't think it's hard work. It's very hard work and it's a lot of time, but people don't really take it that seriously. Um, if we were any other type of designer, they would. If I was Chanel and another company made my design, everybody would say, oh, that's a ripoff of Chanel, and everybody would know it. And we see those kind of things every day, and it's fully acknowledged, but in cake decorating, it's not as acknowledged. But I do not feel that my brain cake was plagiarized, because a lot of people have made brain cakes. Um, to me, it's more important of, of getting your own point of view across and your own style. I've made a lot of cakes that other people have made before, but I always try to do them my way rather than seeing a cake and, and thinking I'm going to make that exact cake. I always try to do it my way. And then I feel like all of you and people who know me recognize my work in that way because you see my style and I try to stay very true to it. Next. Um, okay. Oh, okay. This is from, why, why do I always pick the names that I can't pronounce? This is from Nufal Rashid, Nufal Rashid, zero, zero. Where do you let your cake rest after getting it from the oven? There's actually a rack behind my oven, which you probably can't see well on camera. I take my cakes out and I let them rest there and I let them cool completely. And if they are going in their pans and if they're going to be carved, I actually chill them in their pans just because when a cake is a little bit on the cold side, it's easier to carve and less crumbs fall off and I find it just so much easier. Um, and I've learned that over the years. So that's another great tip. Okay, um, this is from Bake It Till You Make It. I love that name. Um, how did you come up with your basic vanilla and chocolate cake recipes? P.S. I'm glad you liked my username. I do. Thanks for answering my question last week. You're welcome. 
Um, well, there are two recipes that I, those are probably two of the first cakes I ever baked. I can't even remember where I found like the starter recipe. Um, I had a lot of like magazine clippings and little recipes that I had scribbled down on paper. This is before the internet, so definitely wasn't from the internet. And then I just played with them pretty much. I baked it the first time. It needs more of this. It needs less of that. Um, and every single time I baked it, I would alter it. And when I became happy with it, I never touched it again. So I haven't altered it uh, in years. I do get a lot of questions about uh, sort of the doming on my chocolate cake. I haven't been able to stop that. I altered it once and got the doming down, but did not like the texture of the cake. So as far as I'm concerned, the strength and texture of the cake are the most important. And I can live with cake strap, scraps and so can my friends and family. So I don't really think it's that terrible. I can live with it. Next, um, this is from Alicia Atrianda. I hope I said that right. Why do you like using fondant instead of buttercream? P.S. I love you and your videos so much. I love you too. I actually like using buttercream, which you see me use um, more in what we call my mega cakes, <laughs> um, like the scaredy cake for Halloween and the baseball cake World Series cake. I love using buttercream, and buttercream is always usually inside my cakes. Um, but fondant as a decorating medium can't be beat. Like if I had made that turkey cake and, and iced it in buttercream, I would have never been able to achieve that texture. It never would have painted the same because painting on buttercream, buttercream is fatty, so the paint can sort of bead off, unlike fondant, which is a perfect canvas. So in terms of decorating in the cakes I make, then fondant is the winner. I get a lot of questions about fondant. People are very concerned. Um, about the flavor and working with it, but as a decorating medium, it cannot be beat. That's my personal opinion. Um, yes, there is marzipan too, but A, uh, when I was working, a lot of people have nut allergies, a lot. Uh, marzipan isn't really any cheaper than fondant, and marzipan is not white at its base. It is definitely an almond color. So if you're trying to color this um, already warm, shade of, of marzipan and you're trying to make an icy blue, you're never going to achieve that icy blue because there's a yellow undertone in the marzipan to begin with. So that is why I choose fondant. You don't have to worry about eating it. A lot of people don't eat fondant, me included. Um, and even when you see iced cakes with buttercream, when they're iced to perfection, they often have quite a heavy layer of icing on the outside to conceal the cake inside. And that's something I probably wouldn't eat either. So um, it's a fine balance, but you know, as long as your cakes taste great on the inside, if you're trying to achieve the look of something realistic, then uh, your decorating medium is very important. Okay, next. Oh no, I think I can only answer two more. Um, <clears throat> this is from K underscore Kozak. What is the favorite thing you've baked so far? That is my turkey. That's the turkey cake because I was very scared. It was actually my producers, Connie and Jocelyn, who after I wore the turkey hat in the Canadian Thanksgiving video, they were like, oh, you've got to carve a turkey for American Thanksgiving. And I was thinking in my head, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I was very scared. I laid awake the night before, terrified. I asked Chet 500 times if it looked like a turkey. I was very scared, but at the end of it all, I was very, very proud of how it came out. Um, almost every cake, yeah, every cake I've made on how to cake it, other than the books, Back to School, I have never made before. And so I'm making them live for you the first time. And trust me, I'm very, very nervous about that. Okay, so one more. This is from Sarah Alvarado, 14. When did you open your bakery? What did you study in college or university? I do not own a bakery. I never have, and I don't want to. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, I want to focus mainly on really decorated cakes. And so I did have clients before, but what I would do is meet with them, design a cake for them and make them a cake and deliver that cake to them. Um, in order to own a bakery, you have to bake a lot of things. Uh, certainly where I come from, in order to pay your rent, you'd have to bake a lot of things and serve coffee and have a staff. And the truth is what makes me happiest is sculpting and creating cakes with my two best friends. 
Um, I don't want to sit behind a desk and run a bakery. I have no desire to do that. I'm not knocking it. It's just, it's not me. I'm, I like being creative. I love being in the kitchen and being hands-on and I don't want to lose that. Um, and I went to George Brown College here in Toronto and I took culinary management, which was of course to become a chef. Uh, I did that in 1996. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Okay, I think I have to go. Um, okay, I'll answer one last question. This is from Faye Van Bokoven. How do you feel about making healthy cakes? Maybe you can make, uh, ID, I don't know, I think. Fruit cake without sugars or something. By the way, I actually love your videos. I think there's a place in the world uh, for healthy cakes and health foods, absolutely. I actually try to eat quite healthy other than cake. But the truth is when you remove certain things from cakes, you lose everything. So for me to take my cake recipe and take the sugar out or take the eggs out, or take whatever out, um, I would be completely changing the consistency of the cake and then therefore not being able to build it up. And when it comes to the type of cakes I make, structure is everything. Without the structure, I have nothing. So I'm never gonna make a cake on YouTube that I know is gonna fall apart or I'm scared of falling apart. Um, I do wanna make a cake with fruit in it. I've just been waiting for the spring. You know, something like that, but um, yeah, my, my, my whole thing is making, you know, novelty cakes and cakes that look like something. So that's what I focus on. Okay, that's it for Cake Talk. I'm going to get in trouble with Miss Jocelyn. I have to go film a Christmas cake. I'll see you all next time. Bye.